And we're in the control room together. Hello, I'm Peter Stewart. Welcome to today's show. Yeah, we're looking at what happens in and around a voiceover studio. Not just the studio itself, but also the control room too. Now, the control room may be called the gallery, or the production area, the ops area, operations area, or simply studio. Yeah, it could also be called the studio. We may have another name or indeed a number, 1A. Or, or, or something like that. And why am I telling you this in a series of podcasts about how to get a better broadcast podcast and voice over voice? Well, because as we've said before, if you know what happens behind the scenes, if you know how a little bit of kit works, and I'm not saying the whole thing, the whole operations area, but if you know roughly how a microphone works or, or what talkback is, what different roles are in and around a studio, then you're going to understand things more, then you're going to be much more confident in what is going on and confident in yourself and your part and the play the part that you play in all of this in the whole logistics and the whole workflow your part in the jigsaw which is putting together maybe it be a radio show could be a tv program could be a documentary voiceover maybe it's part of a podcast team or maybe which is kind of tending what we're looking at at the moment as part of voiceover yeah because if you know where you fit into the whole jigsaw, you're more likely to be performing better to optimum effect. So while you're alone in a studio, in a voiceover kind of capacity, other people might be just outside where the recording actually happens in a slightly different room. Now, there could be several people in here, maybe eight or ten people in an agency studio situation. Who might they be? And what do you need to know about what they do? That's the topic of today's show. So maybe there could be a creative director, could be a creative writer or two, clients, an account manager, maybe a rep from the marketing department, could be even be a, an engineer, a script writer, sound recordist, all sorts of... Uh, of there, there might even be someone else because uh, I'm coming along because it sounds like fun. There could be a trainee, there could be someone there on work experience or placement or internship. There may be take your daughter to work day, all sorts of things. There may be a, an, an odd dog. I've known that before. A dog in a studio area. Yeah, absolutely. So all sorts of different people. But there should be someone who is, contr who, who is in control of the recording and coordinates the feedback that is given to you. This is really important because otherwise you could be party to lots of different direction suggestions from everyone. And, you know, imagine the mayhem if everyone all pitches in with their thoughts. Too many people telling you too many things and some of them contradictory. Keep a note if you can of who you're introduced to, their name, their position. Then you can talk to them by name. It's more friendly. It builds a relationship. So you can say, so Brian, is, is that the kind of read that you ha had in mind there? Yeah, you can actually talk to people by name. Lots of suggestions from several stakeholders can be quite a challenge to cope with. Now, to be clear, it shouldn't be a problem with the requests changing over the course of, uh, of, of, of a recording. You know, it's, it's quite likely. In fact, it should certainly happen to hear things like, can you try it a bit slower now, please? Or, I know we said we wanted that line kind of thrown away, but can we just try it with a bit more of a punch to see how we go on this? Th that kind of feedback, those kind of notes are really important and they're necessary as the director, the producer, whoever it may be, explores options and you become a bit of a sounding board for their ideas. But what you don't want is constant disagreement between various people of what they want right now. Set some polite parameters at the start, yeah? At the very beginning, once you've been introduced to them. It, it shouldn't be a problem at all for you to say something like, so I think we've put aside about an hour for this, haven't we? Do you think that's going to be OK? Now, I wouldn't refuse to utter a single word when the 60 minutes is up, but be careful your goodwill, and, and, and by that I mean every time someone says, oh, can we just, or just one more take, would you mind awfully? Yeah, You don't want your goodwill or your voice taken advantage of. If, if there's going to be another 20 or 30 minutes work and you can fit it in, that's probably fine. 
you probably want to mention the same or a higher rate, but you should be able to take a 15 minute voice break first. And if you think that might all come over as a little bit precious, a little bit professional, a little bit who does he think he is, then say something along the lines of, so I think we've put aside an hour for this. Why do you think that's going to be okay? I mean, I can stay for a bit longer if you need me to, but with with all this water I'm drinking, I probably need a bath bathroom break at about um, three o'clock. If that's okay, yeah, okay. And and who is it I'm going to be taking the feedback from, the direction from? Oh, it's you, Stevie. Fantastic. All right, that's great. Not a problem at all. Okay, really looking forward to this. Shouldn't be a problem. Thanks very much indeed. It's that kind of polite chit chat that will help you understand what is going on. Everyone knows their role. Everyone knows where they are. Oh, to, okay, tomorrow we're going to be looking at studio talkbacks. What is a talkback? That's not being cheeky and giving someone a bit of verbal, yeah, talking back to them. I don't mean that. Neither is it having a conversation, although a conversation might be involved with the talkback. It's a little bit of kit in your studio. And I'll explain the whys and wherefores about that tomorrow on Get A Better Broadcast Podcast and Voice Over Voice. From London, I'm Peter Stewart.